Jeff Zwerink here again with Give and Take, where we look at those challenging and intriguing scientific ideas and help you be equipped to use them to share the gospel. Today I'm joined with Fuzz Rana and Ken Samples, and we're going to look into a challenging and intriguing question. Did humans and Neanderthals actually interbreed? Fuzz, Ken, good to have you here today. Hi, Jeff. Jeff. You know, this seems like just a non-starter. I mean, how could this possibly be? So why are we even talking about this on the show today? Yeah, well, I mean, whether we like it or not, uh, it's become orthodoxy among anthropologists to think that when humans began to migrate around the world, we encountered Neanderthals and these mysterious creatures that are called the Denisovans. And the belief is that we actually interbred, though to a limited degree, but interbred with some of these creatures. And in fact, it looks as if their genetic material is actually imprinted in uh, the human genome. Most people, if you're not from African ancestry, may have somewhere between 1% to 4% Neanderthal DNA in your genome. So, so this is more than just uh, kind of a passing event or something. It's something that seems to have actually change the human genome, if you will, or, or been introduced into the human gene pool. That, that's exactly right. Uh, now, I'll say this, that uh, the evidence in favor of this is, I think, largely compelling, but there's still a number of outstanding questions that personally, for me, trouble me from a scientific standpoint. So I'm not completely convinced that the interbreeding happened, but there's good evidence that would make it reasonable for someone to draw that conclusion. So if I were to put you on the spot, you know, say somewhere between 100, 0 and 100 percent, where would you put yourself? Uh, probably in the 80 to 85 percent range in terms of certainty that interbreeding happened. But again, there are still some questions that, that don't quite sit comfortably with me. One of them would be that humans and Neanderthals developed very differently from infanthood to adulthood. Mm. And our brain structures were different as well. And you wonder if that difference in developmental trajectories could actually make it difficult or impossible mm -hmm. for interbreeding to take place. Uh, but again, if we're going to go with scientific consensus, we have to say that the interbreeding happened. You know, I, I find that interesting that there's, you know, some level of certainty, but there's some challenges. And, I, and obviously that, you know, from a naturalist perspective, that seems like, oh, yeah, clearly we're just the same types of creatures. Um, you know, it's, it, I, I'm, I'm encouraged to hear that there is some reason for skepticism. But Ken, I'm going to throw it over to you because this raises some challenging theological questions. I mean, let's let's just say this is true. What, mm -hmm. what do we do with that? How does that play out? Well, I think the the issue that almost comes up naturally is what if there is a child conceived and mm -hmm. what is the nature of that child? Um, where where do how do we think about the soul of the child? And mm -hmm. there are these theological debates about how our soul is given. Does God create it directly or is it like the body? It comes from the parents. Mm -hmm. So it raises these uh, challenging and uh, questions as to how to think about those kinds of things. So kind of stepping back for just a second, given the, the idea that Neanderthals and humanity might have coupled, bred, whatever the term we want to use for it, from a biblical perspective, does that trouble you? Uh, well, I mean, there is obviously bestiality and those kinds of things are talked about in the Bible, and there are those uh, those troubling elements. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the soul issues I think are more are mm -hmm. more speculative. Yeah, you know, I, I, that, that to me strikes me. You know, given what what the admonitions are given in the Bible, it doesn't surprise me that this sort of stuff might have been going on. But I agree with you. I think the idea that somehow humans and Neanderthals could have actually produced an offspring in a way that gets incorporated into the human gene pool, that to me is more troubling. So, uh, you know, if we find out that at the end of the day, this is true, this has happened, is this some, do you see this as a defeater for Christianity? I don't see it as a defeater for Christianity. Um, I, I don't think it rises to the level of of something that would violate or go against essential Christian doctrine. Um, you know, it, it it's a strange thing. It is a uh, it raises issues that are that are out of the norm. But no, I don't think that it it affects any absolute essential element. Well, you know, the the way I kind of think through this as a biochemist in, mm -hmm. now. Uh, dabbling in theology is that, you know, 
if you think of the the soul being uh, a cre- from a creationist view, where God is creating the soul in each embryo, you could argue that God recognized that one of those parents was actually a human being and mm-hmm. honored that and created a soul in that human Neanderthal hybrid. If you take the view uh, that the soul is kind of inherited from the parents, you can make the argument, well, the image of God isn't really divisible. It's mm-hmm. either there or not. And so that offspring could very well have a soul, mm-hmm. even though one of the parents was a Neanderthal because one of the parents was human. So that's how I've kind of made sense of it. But I agree, it's really a very uncomfortable idea. But if this is where the science is forcing us, we've got to address it theologically and biblically. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that to me is one of the aspects of Christianity that I find very engaging is that there are things that I look at and it's like, ooh, really? But then you investigate and it's like Christianity has this theological depth and robustness to mm-hmm. to kind of deal with whatever the scientific challenges come up and, and kind of in recognition that if God's the creator of the world, what we see in scripture and what we see in creation are going to agree. So uh, what, what are your thoughts on, on how do we wrestle with this and how might we use this to engage the culture? Well, I, I like what Fuzz says. I mean, I, I think we have to take truth wherever it is. If, if the data indicates that this happened, you know, Christians need to be able to have a, a breadth of their worldview that can incorporate these kinds of things. And uh, again, dealing with the soulish issue, um, even if you believe in traditionism, again, the idea that the soul comes from mm-hmm. the parents, God could have worked miraculously in this particular event. But uh, obviously, um, there are the the moral issues of, of uh, you know, human beings relating one to another, not with some animal. Mm-hmm. But it could also be that the humans in this case were, uh, were victims. Mm-hmm. So that's another element of this, I think. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting, too, that presumably some of the genes that were introduced into the human gene pool from Neanderthals actually helped humans to survive as we were migrating around the world, encountering new types of parasites that we never encountered mm-hmm. before. They, there's a belief that some of our immunity actually is coming from the Neanderthal genome. And that reminds us that, you know, that, that while what scripture teaches that while somebody may intend something for evil, mm-hmm. God can use it for good. So even in this, you could see God redeeming this horrible, mm-hmm. horrible uh, uh, act. You know, this really is one of those areas where it's challenging to deal with. But what I find remarkable about the Bible is that, and Christianity is, it has a robustness to not only deal with the splendor of humanity, but also with the depravity of humanity in a way that is coherent and compelling and equips us to engage others with the gospel. I would encourage you to go check out Fuzrana's book, Who is Adam?, where he delves into all of the scientific details so that you're equipped to use this bizarre topic to share the gospel. Now let's head over to Monica to see what she's doing with RTB News.